Okay. But what about the volume of that activity? Okay, so they were doing physical activity, but how much of it were they actually doing? Well, as I've said, we're bipedal, and the types of walking patterns that you see in hunter-gatherer populations typically allow them to expand their range. They don't typically go for a walk and follow one route. They tend to follow random power law distributions when they're foraging to try and increase their range and maximize their yield in terms of foraging. Um, you typically find that, although if you look back at kind of the review articles by Lauren Cordain and James O'Keefe and those guys, they'll pull the magic number or magic range of 6 kilometers to 16 kilometers a day was the typical range for hunter-gatherers. That tends to be based on like one study in the Hadza. Um, when you look at other studies, you typically see that actually they don't tend to move around anywhere near as much as that. Every few weeks or so, they might move camp or they might move on from the position they're in, but typically, whatever location they're in, they maybe only move, or certainly some populations, up to around two and a half miles around that in terms of range. It's, you know, they're not walking 16 kilometers a day, as we typically were told by the academics who are writing these articles. If you look at the body of literature, it tends to be highly variable. In fact, some studies show that they spend you know, maybe 70 to 80 hours of their waking day just resting, sitting around, being sedentary, all the stuff that's killing us, apparently, but somehow doesn't kill them. It's a bit like the French paradox. You know, the French eat lots of saturated fat, but they have low heart disease. So obviously the saturated fat that we're eating is killing us, but it's not killing them somehow. It's probably the red wine. For these guys, it's probably the berries and you know, other stuff that they eat. Don't know. Anyway. So I decided, and uh, Greg was talking to me earlier about this, he said, said, I'm a cautious type, I like to have data. So what I did was I went to all the studies and I pulled out the data and I ran some stats on it myself. So I went through and pulled out all of the articles that I could find that had actually recorded physical activity levels, i.e. the ratio of total energy expenditure to resting metabolic rate, to look and actually compare hunter-gatherer populations, agricultural populations, and modern populations, and also looked at comparing it to this Paleolithic standard that Boyd Eaton and colleagues actually kind of defined as a physical activity level back in 2003. Um, and, and hopefully this will be coming out in a paper that, we're, uh, that I've been invited to publish in Journal of Evolution and Health. But when I ran the stats on it, although there are slight differences between hunter-gatherer agricultural populations and modern populations, they're a little bit more active in terms of the physical activity levels data that we can look at. It's not significantly different, you know. Whether it's big enough to actually have a meaningful effect on their health and fitness, I don't know. But at least when we look at the data, it's certainly not statistically significant. What I think is more interesting, though, is actually the intensity of activity that they're engaged in. So one of the things that does seem to differ between their populations and our populations is the fact that actually they do spend some of their day involved in very high intensity activity. So when you look at the distribution of uh, the vigorousness or the, the difficulty or, the, or how hard the activity they're actually engaged in across the course of a day, you see that they spend quite a lot of time engaged in very sedentary or light activities. Certainly in the populations looked at in these pa papers, you see that the uh, light gray at the bottom of the graph indicates that they spent a considerable portion of the, of the day sedentary or engaged in light activities. Now, this was really interesting as well, though, is that when you differentiate between day and night in men and women, you might not be able to see it on the graph so much, but at night, the men are engaged in maybe a few minutes of very, very vigorous activity, but not the women. So I leave that to you guys to speculate as to what they might be doing. I know what I think they might be doing. They've gone out for an interval session in the middle of the night, of course. <laughs> but anyway, it, we typically find that they spend a lot of time in, yeah, some low intensity activity or being very sedentary. If you look at the average speeds at which they move around at, Dr. Kim Hill's observations in the, uh, in the Archie men typically showed that they were walking around at an average of about one and a half to three kilometers an hour. Occasionally, they would involve themselves in short bursts of sprinting, particularly when hunting or foraging. But I mean, 1.5 to three kilometers an hour, that's a really slow stroll. That's, that's not even kind of average walking speed for most populations nowadays. That's, pretty, that's taking it pretty easy. I mean, even when you look at the studies on persistence hunting, the average speed at which they move at is 6.1 kilometers an hour. Now, that's a bit of a route march, but that's not a jog. That's still walking just at a pretty quick pace. But what it indicates is that they were probably involved in some high intensity activity and then a lot of low intensity or sedentary type activity.
and even in children as well. We see that in the child populations, they spend a lot of time engaged in very low intensity activity and then occasionally very high intensity activity. And this is what I think might be missing from what most modern populations are engaged in. So what about the types and modalities of exercise that they were engaged in? So we know they were doing high intensity activity, but what types of activity were they engaged in to produce that high intensity? So most of us think about the idea of a hunter-gatherer, and again, coming back to this idea that most in the kind of paleo fitness sphere recommend play, primal play, all these kinds of things, you know, very kind of unstructured, social type physical activity. Studies that have looked at hunter-gatherer populations do indicate that they do engage in a lot of play, but not play as we would think about it, or certainly not play as in is recommended from these uh, paleo fitness guys. So when you look at play, you tend to see that the children engage in a lot of physical activity type play, running around the playground, the types of things you see kids doing in the schoolyard, playground, schoolyard, and doing it again, Americanisms. But when you look at the adults, the play they engage in is more sat around, chatting, cracking jokes, you know, playing pranks, being creative. It's not physical activity play, it's play in spirit. So, do we necessarily need to be structuring exercise around this concept of play when even hunter-gatherers' own adult physical activity patterns aren't structured around this idea of, well, unstructured play activity? Now, as I said, they did engage in a lot of random walking patterns, but what we typically see is most of that occurs around the camp, the hut, some of it occurs when they go out foraging or hunting, but most of it occurs around the home, for use of a better word. Now, out of interest, I've actually been using a pedometer myself recently, and it's interesting the number of steps I actually take just walking around the house each day. Sometimes before I leave for work, I sometimes accrue 2,000 steps just from walking room to room, picking things up, into the kitchen, make a coffee, into the bathroom, brush my teeth, whatever. You know, we do spend a lot of time walking around the house, and that's typically where we accrue most of our walking-type physical activity. It's surprising how much we actually accrue. And the same applies for hunter-gatherers as well. Most of their walking is just around the camp, around the campsite, around the huts, so on and so forth. Running, did they run? Well, we've got some evidence of persistence hunting, but then we've got other populations where the researchers had never seen a single person in the tribe running. So it's difficult to say we should be running Maybe we should, I don't know, we can, but should we be doing it? I mean, if hunter-gatherers don't do it if they don't need to, should we be going out and racking up miles and miles around the block each day?